Lens is a man with many sides, and as we discovered, many lives. He's a best-selling author. Do you know how many books have sold? Yeah, uh, several hundred thousand. Several hundred thousand? Oh, yeah. But Frederick Lenz sells more than just books. He's an English major, a PhD who became a flower child meditation teacher. His is a rags to riches story, or robes to riches. Today, Lenz controls his own new age empire with hundreds of people he has called his disciples. How much would you say your various ventures are worth at this point? I really don't know. It, it fluctuates. Is it millions? Oh, sure. Wait, tens of millions? No, 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 I'm not there yet. No, next week maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Lenz would describe himself as a savvy entrepreneur and teacher, just surfing the outer envelope of the new age, his success matched by the success of those he's touched. And all that is partly true, partly. From his folksy meditation classes, Lenz has invented his own brand of Buddhism. I asked the Zen master, what is dancing? He's got his own new age band, Zazen. He's a world-class snowboarder for the black belt in martial arts. Successful? Uh, yeah, evidently. Uh, I mean, I can knock people down without much problems. He's into diving. The deeper and more dangerous, the better, he says. Is there an edge you're going for? Yes, absolutely. Really? All the time. Actually, I like hanging over the edge just a little bit. But it's the cutting edge of technology where Len says he is the most comfortable these days as a self-described computer software visionary. Most of the money I make in software, I design artificial intelligence systems. And um, I'm just a workaholic. I'm not married. I'm single. I have Scotty dogs. You're looking very buffy, I have to tell you. I have to tell you. Not bad for one lifetime, but Len says he's on his eighth. This CEO will candidly tell you he hasn't always been blonde. I got this Caucasian body, and it's created all kinds of problems in, in the West. Uh, I've never had one before. It's a new experience. I'm used to being shorter and being in a land where I am understood. What we've been working on mainly are... The people who truly life. speak the language of Frederick Lenz are in this room, his paying students, hundreds of well-dressed, college-educated men and women who know Lenz as Rama, know that he used to be called Atmananda, and they know all about his past lives. He gave them a resume. In the 1500s, Len says he was a Zen master in Japan. In the 1700s, he lived in a monastery in Tibet. The 1800s, India. In our century, he's still on the pulpit with a highly evolved message. Meditation, Buddhism, computers. He talks about all of it and about his biggest frustration with this lifetime, that he has been accused of leading a cult. Excuse me, last time I heard, you know, there was freedom of religion and, and one could study computer science and Buddhism and the two did not make one a cult member. <laughs> I don't have followers. You don't have followers? Not unless I'm in traffic. No, but, <laughs> why, why are you making that point now? Because <laughs> I'm teasing you. But for years, Lenz was a follower of Indian guru Sri Chinmoy, spiritual guide to the rich and famous, until, as Lenz tells it, the student of Chinmoy became the master. In 1980, Lenz incorporated himself as Frederick P. Lenz, High Priest, the First Diocese of California of the Church of Atlantis. That's right, Atlantis. You know the place. Here it is in the movie Atlantis, the Lost Continent. Sank into the ocean a few thousand years ago, Lenz claims he may have worked there as a computer programmer. For a Buddhist, Lenz had quite a sales pitch. Blanketing college campuses with posters in the early 80s, calling himself Atmananda or Rama, he promised a short path to enlightenment. Lenz claimed he could deliver in just a minute, quote, levels of awareness that would have taken hundreds of years to reach on your own. We were essentially offering educational products and artificially intelligent products at very, very low prices uh, that work. It's a concept. <laughs> and for this we get called a cult. <laughs> Welcome to modern day America. A cult? Okay. Nonsense, okay, says right. Frederick Thank Lenz. You. Thank you. So we wanted to know just how he came by his millions. It's kind of happened by accident. Uh, the albums have done well, the software's done well. I just picked things that I like to do in life 
and went after them with everything I had. He says it happened by accident. So we tried to find out how much of Lenz's millions come from books, music, and software, the things he creates, and how much comes from the pockets of the hundreds of students who follow him everywhere and hang on his every word. For an unknown author, we found out that Lenz got an unbelievable media blitz for his book. Here's one of his radio ads. I read a great novel last night, Surfing the Himalayas. Me? I don't have time to read. Got to work, got to make money, got to get somewhere. That's what Surfing the Himalayas is about. He got a low six-figure advance from two publishers. But we found out that Lenz paid over a million dollars to market his book, hiring his own publicist, taking out full-page newspaper and magazine ads. He even paid to have ads projected onto 1,700 multiplex movie screens. We found out it's something Lenz doesn't like to talk about. How much did you pay for it, do you think? Uh, that's my business. A lot? A bunch. A bunch? Some. Yeah. A little. None. I know. I did mean, it help? Well, you, who knows? We'll find out. We've sold 200,000 copies. But publishing executives told us it was more like 90,000. As for the music, Lenz's albums have not made the charts. And let's go way up. He invited us to watch him compose with a member of Zazen, his band. Now let's go in the after step it way down. How do you compose music? Feelings, emotions, places mostly. So but how do you write the actual music? Well, the guys and I sit down and we write the music. Not all the members of Zazen agree that Lenz even is a composer. I never, in my definition of composition and writing, saw him write anything. Former band member Steve Kaplan is a professional musician and composer and actually plays on Zazen's albums. Lenz lists himself on the Zazen albums as one of the members of the band. Yes. What does he play? He doesn't play anything. Not even a tambourine? Not even. In other words, Frederick Lenz is no Yanni. Not even close. Total sales for Zazen are about 15,000 albums. To date, the band has received a mere $5,000 in royalties. And like his book, we discovered Frederick Lenz paid to advertise the Zazen albums. Whoa! Paid for a music video and paid most of the album's production costs. It's more likely Lenz lost money on Zazen. So what about his computer businesses? Yeah, I just seem to have a knack for, for architectural design, uh, for networking software. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's a job. <laughs> Somebody's got to do it. I'm overwhelmed by success.